And now, the deep holy guy. And now, and now, and now, the deep holy guide to the 21st century. Welcome back. Welcome back to the boys getting loose in the cues. The deep homie guide, 2021. Let's go, June 25th. What's up, P Daddy Woods? Oh man, <laughs> life is busy, but it's good to be here. Yeah. Yeah. Busy, busy for me too, because I'm a 28 year old man who can't stop skateboarding, and so we have <laughs> a uh, a cold shoulder over here. Yeah. And a cold shoulder at the same time. Oh, well, cold shoulder. Dude, yeah. It's it's literally giving shoulder. me the cold shoulder. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how did it uh, happen? What, oh, what, God. what level of Ollie were you trying to attempt? No, when it's, it, went it, was, south? it was actually a freak accident. I oh. swear. Uh, well, I had this, I got this new pair of shoes. I got the old man skaters. I got the new balances. Okay. <laughs> now the new balance, for some reason, you know, new balance, right? You know, it's, it's really meant for like 50 plus year old guys that mow their lawn. Yeah. In. You don't really have the pop belly for a new balance shoe, you know? Believe it or not, New Balance started releasing pro skate shoes in the last 10 years. Wow. And they got they assembled an incredible team. I don't know, everybody uh Tiago Limon, you wouldn't know these names, but L- Tiago Limon is on there. Um freaking Jamie Foy, one of the best skaters in America, is on there. Like they got a really high end team and they got a really high end shoe and they got great skate shoes. Wow. Expensive too and nice. So I got a pair of new balances. I'm like, yeah, I got my new balances on. <laughs> and uh they were just I could tell they were half a size too big. Yeah. But I was I couldn't bring myself to go get the nine fives. I was like, I'm a ten. I'm a ten. Straight up. <laughs> He's a ten. And so I, they were a little too big, a little too bulky, and I was going for the crooked grind <laughs> with fucking John. <sighs> and I fell, dude, with all my way outstretched arms. So how does how do you even how does this happen? How do you fall and just so <laughs> crunch? And I was afraid, man. I, I had had a shoulder surgery a couple of years ago. When I got hit by a car. Oh man! Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I uh, I was really afraid. It was just, it felt the same? I was like, oh my god! I just tore my my shoulder again. This is gonna be horrible. It's gonna be another ten months of recovery. No more working out. No more getting big. Nothing. Just sitting there on my ass. This is gonna be the cycle continues. I'm like, oh my god! But I went to the doc and he's like, hey, luckily it's the rotator cuff, not the labrum, so you'll be good mm. in two weeks. I'm like, thank you, God. So yeah. I'm a 28 year old guy who can't stop skateboarding. Maybe I need to stop. <laughs> and uh, uh but what's up with you man Not enough about me let's hear about you oh man uh oh, you know just just uh just getting older by the day uh, <laughs> that's sad we got a it looks <laughs> looks likely that we, we we got a buyer and and things are coming along with the house it's uh yeah. it's a long process though getting older by the day you ready to order your new balances oh man <laughs> <laughs> i've been thinking it's so hard about how much i miss ball uh balling uh, loving the NBA playoffs right now. Just, just loving watching that. And uh, who do you got in the NBA playoffs? Oh my gosh, Nets are out, right? It's totally bizarre. It's a bizarre. It, these are the randomest lineup. Like you don't see yeah. the names you're used to seeing. You're not seeing. You're not seeing Miami. You're not seeing LA. You're not seeing any. No, yeah, you're not seeing any of the people you normally see. Like Paul George no looks Gold, like he's good. No Golden State. <laughs> Yeah, this is crazy. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't look like a head case. He looks like he's uh, uh, effective. Um, I don't know. It really feels like it's anyone's game out of the four left. Um, it'd be insane if Atlanta won. It just would be insane. Well, would you be happy since you're moving there? I like, know, I right? I know. It's like, That's my team now, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but it's in, it's been incredible to to see a uh, little six foot one guard uh, killing it against all these giants. So uh, kind of defying the odds. Um, yeah, but but it's making me want to get back out there. So I'm like, man, I gotta I gotta drop weight just to just to think I'm gonna run up and down. You don't want to be that fat guy on the court anymore. Uh, you don't want to be I that guy. You remember I've that guy in the fat guy? Remember, on the court. remember and one where somehow there was a dude that was like 400 pounds that was just like somehow getting up there and just yeah, yeah, yeah. slamming it guess, down. Guess what he didn't do? Continue to play at 35. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 35 year olds don't probably play. in a wheelchair now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So. So I, I gotta go. I gotta have a get in in shape push just to be the fat guy on the court. Now. So you're gonna get snipped, whipped, and peeled for the summer. You're gonna get oh, trimmed up, yeah. trimmed up, ready to oh, go. Yeah, you, yeah. T- you tell me you were you were getting sore. So you yeah. must be working out, huh? Tiny you, bit. Yeah, tiny you got bit. your little uh, pumped. Little, little uh, what do you call them? I um, I bought some resistance. Bands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, it's uh, good shit. It's you know it looks pitiful, but whatever. Who cares? You know. Dude, I wish I could even lift a resistance band right now. My yeah. arm. <laughs> I'm out. For the count for two weeks, no skateboarding, no weightlifting, and uh, just straight me and my brain I'm trying to read yeah. some books. Um, but uh, hey, we're gonna get to that later. Awesome. Right now, right now, mm-hmm. I would like to introduce to the world 
you may have noticed the new Deep Homie Guide logo. Check this bad yeah. boy out. Oh my god, it's fresh. He's right? off the toilet, people. I, you know, so <laughs> you know, I thought I was being a uh, I thought I was being what's the word? Like uh I thought I was being sophisticated, bringing in a updated version of August Rodin's mm. The Thinker sculpture, famous 19th century naturalist sculpture. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful image of a man thinking. Considered at this point a quintessential image of thought and philosophy even. Yeah, yeah. But unfortunately, I, I brought him in, you know, beautiful guy. Got him out. He's sitting there. He's sitting there. I put a pair of sunglasses on him. I made his hair blue or whatever. Yeah, I yeah. think. And he had, he had, he had a, a cell phone in his hand, like, oh, it's so 21st century. Mm-hmm. Deep homie got the 21st century. <laughs> no doubt. And he literally even had a Uranus. Uh, sounds bad, but Uranus is the planet that is the planet of Aquarius, uh, Aquarius sign. And it's like, oh, we're in the age of Aquarius. I talked about in the first podcast. The future, uh, science and tech is always accelerating, all this other stuff. And everybody just thought it was God taking a shit. There's no... <laughs> 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 yeah, they're like, oh, why is he on the toilet with this? Oh, I guess everyone has it on the toilet with this cell phone. Why is he totally naked? Well, the worst part. You don't poop totally naked, do you? No, yeah. I just, yeah, exactly. And that's because the sculpture was naked. I was supposed to put clothes on the sculpture. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah, people, and people are like, oh, the sculpture. This thing is by that pervert who made a naked sculpture. Sorry. Like, that's all people are thinking. Yo, it's it's a mess. So he, uh, okay, so, and so the thing about Rodin, too, is that he had more than one sculpture. He had, everyone's seen The Kiss, right? You've seen the kiss. Oh, I don't know. It's famous famous lovers. Well, are all of them the like the thinker? Um, the no, kiss? there's like gates of heaven and hell or something. That's another famous one. It's like or hell or something. Like gates oh. of hell. It's like a Dante's Inferno. Uh, sculpture. The gates. But to be fair, he does have a sculpture called Monument to Balzac. So I guess Monument to Balzac. <laughs> well, yeah, Monument to Balzac. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. It's a Monument to Balzac, the great French writer. But I mean, we don't even need to go there. Dude. <laughs> Do you think people in history were laughing at that name? <laughs> no, b- no, Balzac. Well, it's in, in French. I feel like it's like or something, or whatever. And I, I don't uh, think Balzac in French is the same as Balzac in English. That's an unfortunate. And trip. you know, French don't speak like they're very snooty about their language. They're really into francophoneness, and they don't think about English. Francophoneness. Yeah, are you familiar with the fa- fact that, like the French speakers are very like into their language? They like their language, and they don't like the fact that English is like trying to always push and pull itself into the world affairs and be the they want. Fr- they're always trying to push French. Oh wow! They're oh, big okay, into their okay, language. Wow. It is a beautiful. I would like to learn French. I think it's a cool language. But yeah, yeah. I speak a little Spanish. I've been watching Breaking Bad in Spanish lately. But oh yeah, really? Uh, you do that sometimes? Do you like rock the English subtitles while you? I rock the to Spanish it? subtitles. Actually. Spanish subtitles mm-hmm. with English with Spanish audio or Spanish. Or Spanish. Spanish. Spanish, Spanish, double yeah, Spanish, double span. Okay, okay. <laughs> Two <laughs> I, Spaniards. I, I, it's uh, it's and with that, I can do it. Uh, you can I, do it when it's pure, pure language. It's a little tougher. Oh wow! But I'm good with the subtitles and the audio. I can. Absolutely. How do you how do you deal with uh like uh, uh I can't remember the name of the network, but like a like a Spanish network soap opera. How do you do with that? Is can you can you follow those? Uh yeah, I mean I can sort of follow them. I I mean if I'm just listening to straight Spanish talking, I can uh, more or less. I can more or less like kind of like the dunce of the culture, like understand, like I can, I know what's going on. I can yeah. pick out enough keywords and stuff. Mm-hmm. The problem is the Spanish is so often and in all language really is so fast for the average speaker. Like when you're learning Spanish, Especially school, Spanish. it's like, hola, como estas? Yeah. Me llamo caram. Estamos en Sierra so like it's like you that's how you, it. oh yeah, yeah, yeah I can yeah, do that yeah. but when in, in real life it's like oh it's like okay yeah, yeah, yeah. buddy could you take no it chance. You take it I'm like muy lento más lento por favor more slower mm-hmm. um but uh, yeah I can I can do it but uh it, and they what, don't you, slow you know, down the weirdest thing is and I don't know if you're familiar with this not since you don't do Spanish whatever um one of the oh weird, I've tried I've struggled with Spanish well before. one of the most annoying things is that when you got a dub oftentimes the dub and the subtitles don't match Ooh. basically always almost Ooh. always. Because the the dub is done in whatever more a semi I, I think they're trying to go for a semi believable Spanish or something, whereas the subtitles are done for efficiency, mm. are done for as little as possible. Gotcha. So when I'm watching, I'm kind of like half schizophrenic because I'm seeing one thing and hearing another, but it's enough to where I'm getting the whole gist. I, really I almost don't need the subtitles, but sometimes when they get into more like during Bring Bad, they get into more complicated. Like if they're talking about like I don't know chemistry, methamphetamine, or mm-hmm. or maybe when actual Spanish characters are speaking, like Gus or. Uh, whatever or the Spanish I'm in the third season whatever you know when they actually speaking like real Spanish it can be tougher but uh, I don't even know how we got on this topic uh, that's really it's really interesting to me how do you do how do you do, do, you do uh, when you're um, you're like 
can you keep up with the the plot line of Mask of Zorro per se? Is that or is that I haven't seen is that too quick? It, I'm not sure. I could tell you that I could guarantee you that if you made me watch a movie in Spanish and there was no subtitles, um, I could probably like if there was a quiz on the movie. I would probably scrape a pass, probably. Oh wow, that's great! Like, I would be like a sixty-six or something. Like it would be, it wouldn't be good. <laughs> It'd be a sixty-nine, really. It wouldn't be good. So uh, it wouldn't, but it wouldn't be bad either. And I got us out of recently in Mexico. <laughs> recently in Mexico, New York. <laughs> no. <laughs> I got us out, got us out of a jam, dude. We were down in Mexico surfing a few months ago, and none of my boys really speak, spoke good Spanish, and I spoke okay Spanish. Yeah, yeah. And uh, like we were trying to get north to get to the back to the city which is five hours north so we could catch our flights the next morning okay and we were running out of gas in the car we didn't fill up earlier i don't know why all of a sudden we get make our way to this random town this random surf town we're on our way on our way no i gasolina there's no gas no like, gas oh okay we'll keep going to the next guy go to the next gas station oh no i gasolina mm-hmm. no i uh when are we get don't they uh cuando uh, vas a tener gasolina when are you gonna have it uh pa- quizás mañana no, we can't wait till tomorrow. Like, and all this other stuff. So I, my friends and I are like, they're like, oh my God. So I had to keep, I was the interpreter because nobody else could do it. So I had to keep going, talking to all these gasoline attendants. Nobody had it. Wow. All of a sudden we find, believe, dude, this could not be, this is a dream. All of a sudden somebody's like, one of the attendants is like, quizás caram tiene. He literally said, perhaps caram has some. I'm like, he's like, caram. But that's you. I'm like, no, caram. He's like, no, caram tiene tienda. Uh, Busca, he like looks into Google Maps. He shows me the Tienda de Karam, which is 15 miles or whatever, 10 kilometers, something north. Yeah. A decent bit. And we're like, oh my God, we can, can we make it up that hill? We have no gas. So we're like, <laughs> oh my God, oh my God. And it turned out that we stopped on the way at this other market and we see somebody with a car. We're like, please, can we please siphon some gas? Just a tiny bit. Like, we'll pay you dope, doble, all this other stuff. And the guy was like, no, no. And he was all mad at us. And all of a sudden, it was the stupidest thing ever. I don't know how we get into the story, but I, I told him that I was like, por favor, estamos, uh, 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 nosotros somos cristianos. I said we are both Christians because I saw the Christian <laughs> yes, thing on. Yes. Um, I, uh, no, actually, I said something even stupider. I said somos uh, uh, ambos or whatever. We are both catolicos because I, I made a dumb generalization that most Mexicans are Catholic, which they, I think they are. Oh, okay. Yeah. But yeah. this guy was an evangelical. Gotcha. And not only was he evangelical, he's one of the kind of evangelicals that really feels like Catholicism is like a complete perversion and a sat- satanic thing. Oh, and you're following okay. This, this Pope yeah. Antichrist guy. Whatever. Uh-oh. So he starts on this whole rant how, no, 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 it's Cristiano. <laughs> Mucho no, evangelical. Mira, mira. He pulls out this phone. He shows me the Bible app. He's like, solo el Bible, no priest or whatever, no sacerdote and all this stuff. And I'm like, oh, no. Tambien yo tiene. Like I literally for some reason had the Bible app too because I'm t- I don't know. I showed it to him, yeah. and he was like, he was, he was like, no. And I was like, I started getting pissed. I was so mad at him. He was like, you are not a Christian, and all this stuff. And I was like, I'm like, you are literally like, I, the best I could in Spanish. I'm like, you are a hypocrite. You are this, that, and the other. And he was getting so mad. He pulled out a knife and all this stuff. We had to leave. As as every good Christian should, <laughs> he pulled out a knife. Dude, it was literally. He was like, cause he's like, no, you're not. Getting, I'm not going to do this Spanish. But he's like, well, he's like, yeah. He's like, tu eres gritaba, uh, grita, whatever. He's saying that I'm yelling. Now you're not going to get the gas. Did you? Do you he's know? Like, you're not getting gas because you yell. Do you know the Spanish Bible well enough to start quoting scripture to oh, him? Could you believe it? <laughs> oh, of course, of course. He, he pulls out a knife and you start quoting Jesus. You're like, live by the sword, die by the sword. It was no mas violenzo. So long story short, we get to where Karam is supposed to be at, and. Uh, <laughs> At this point, we're knocking on somebody's door. The most beautiful daughter of all time comes out. I'm like, oh my God, who is this daughter? Oh, and wow. I'm like, is, are you the daughter of Karam? They're like, who's Karam? And all this stuff. Anyway, somebody who was not Karam came out who looked like he should have been Karam. Long story short, they're trying to eventually just give us money. I'm like, no, no, necesitamos gasolina, por favor. Solo necesitamos un poquito de gasolina. Vamos a pagar doble, doble. No, no, no me importa. Cualquier dinero quieres? Tenemos. Necesitamos gasolina. Because we're like, the, the car is like basically about to pass out. Yeah. But this Karam fake imposter came out and uh, thank God he had a huge tank of gas. And so we fucking siphoned that Just shit right Just carrying in. it around with him? Or no, what? he lived in the mountain. We were 15 or whatever, 15 kilometers in miles. Wow. And you said you siphoned? You siphoned? We siphoned it. My poor friend Spence was like, I he did literally the talking. He did the Oh, man. He was like, <laughs> he was like the worst. <laughs> but long story short, Karam and his two beautiful daughters, it wasn't Karam, was there for us. And we got the gas and made it out of there. But my friends were like, oh, my God. They were like venerating me for speaking so much Spanish. I'm like, shit. Wow. So, is venerating complimenting? or Venerating what? is like. I'm kidding. Oh, bowing down. So anyway, to, I that it. happened. Yeah. Uh, how did we go from our logo to ball sack to Spanish? Yeah, I missed something in there. To surf you, vacation you and You very Karam. quickly said 
Uranus is the planet for... Yeah, uh, the old logo has Uranus in it. That's that planet and the logo. Oh, uh, okay. Uranus is one of the planets that governs Aquarius. Here's the thing. The sign of Aquarius. If you're and, trying to avoid potty humor, <laughs> the you planet do- Uranus cannot be part of your... Uranus. your yeah, yeah, but Uranus still <laughs> sounds like you're taking a whiz. Oh, you, there's no way to get around. It's either there's Uranus, no way. It's either yeah, Uranus, Uranus is one or way Uranus. Or like... You're between a rock and a soft place. I don't you're know. From, you're, <laughs> like you're, a, a wet pick place. Pick the front or the back. <laughs> you're a rock and a wet place. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a butt is a rock now, according to you? You know, I didn't have enough insight. I don't know. I'm, I don't think I've ever been a great marketer. I don't know. I haven't even been able to market this podcast very well. I don't know how to do it. And I think that logo, whatever. I'm, I, I really like whatever we have now. Mm. I'm really happy with the, the postmodern blue cyborg who's just thinking. I think that's cool. And I think that's. A possible takeoff. I think they yeah. can go somewhere. I don't think the old one ever had a chance. I feel like someone now, instead of going like, "Why are you on the toilet?" They're gonna be like, "You really like Bruno Mars, huh?" You know? <laughs> no, it's just. <laughs> <laughs> Although I might, I might really cut my hair off soon. Oh yeah. Uh, but hey, that's another topic. So we don't have tons of time. Let's keep going. Yeah. What's up, Instagram Live? If you're watching, what's good? Like and subscribe on YouTube, even yes. though we're not live right there right now. All the other wonderful. Deep Homie Guides are on there on YouTube. Mm-hmm. So like or subscribe on YouTube, please. And uh, thank you for watching if you're on live right now. Uh, and uh, I'm Karam. This is Paul. And this is the Deep Homie Guide of the 21st Century that takes place in Syracuse almost every week for not much longer. This is like limited edition because oh, yeah, yeah. P. Daddy Woods is moving and I I might, I might move too. I don't uh, know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. My parents are like, oh, don't go. I'm like, I might move to New York. They're like, please don't go. And I'm like, bro. Your daughter lives in L.A. Mm-hmm. That yeah. is 3,000 miles away. I, if I moved to New York, it's four hours. It's yeah. not a big deal. I can come home on the weekend. They're like, oh. I'm like, yeah. you should have loved me when you had a chance. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling that too. Like there's a little look of like you're really going to leave, huh? But instead, I can't be like, your daughter lives in L.A. I got to be like, well, your daughter lives in Chittenango, so <laughs> you, can, you can hang out with her. Be like, oh, <laughs> Karim's sister Najla lives in L.A., isn't that? Yeah, Najla. This, yeah, I'll bring that up. Like, Najla pertinent. moved to L.A., mom. Get over it. <laughs> Karim's friend Danny from Vassar moved to L.A. How come I can't? Yeah, yeah. Just bringing up somebody who has no yeah. reference to their life. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, uh, now that we went through all those wondrous topics, all those hurdles. How, how much time are we at right now? How long do we? we <laughs> we're like 18 like minutes five, in. It's been five minutes. Almost 20 I've minutes. basically spent all of my energy. Okay, so we're going to take a quick moment and pause. Not really, but I'm basically okay. saying for us, not for the viewer. Fuck you guys. We, oh, all right. oh, that was a little mean. I like you. You should subscribe. I, <laughs> <laughs> I have no place being a podcast host. I'm a mis- uh, No, I'm not a misogynist. I was going to say not misogynist. I was trying to say a misanthrope. You know what a I don't know. You were mis- throwing out the mis- vocab words. A misanthrope is somebody who doesn't like people. <laughs> <laughs> don't subscribe. I, I, it's funny because I, I don't I, subscribe. I think I think I've just heard the term a hole all <laughs> my whole life. <laughs> so I got done reading this fucking book. All right, a misanthrope. I had the whole dictionary in it. All right. Oh, really? It did inside of there? Yeah. It's actually called Infinite Jest. Is uh, one of the classifications is encyclopedic. Novel, encyclopedic novel, or something. An encyclopedic novel, because there's so much. In addition to so much plot, there is actually so much information. Oh, it's literally. Uh, we're going to talk about that later. It's it, this is one. This is one of the best things though I've ever finished. Is it the kind of book that spends like three paragraphs describing a sunset? No, actually. Okay, cool. no, it's good, it's a good. lot more of the the three paragraph thing would be more like really interesting internal dialogue in somebody's head or crazy information about. Um, this future infer, uh, entertainment uh, system, or all this other, or the worst part of this book, but also kind of the best, is this: is the footnotes. It has footnotes, two hundred pages of footnotes. No, Whoa. end notes, even worse. Not even footnotes at the bottom of the page. You gotta go. Wait a minute. We and can't all talk. of it's just a we're big gonna, joke. It's not a big joke, but it's. Ba- we're gonna talk about that later. We're gonna talk about infant just later. I want to talk about something even more important than fucking one of the greatest uh, pieces of literature in the last. Well, even more. What, important? Even more important than that, we have a premiere. If you're watching right now, you might be one of the first people in the whole world. To see this, mm-hmm. we have, hey man, I gotta tell you something. Okay. This is better than Infinite Jet. Fuck all that high <laughs> literature stuff. We got, hey man, I gotta tell you something. This is a sketch, a three minute sketch that's gonna blow your socks off. Okay? Yeah. yeah. It stars me as a scumbag and him as himself. <laughs> so we got. <laughs> <laughs> so I just wanted to, we're gonna show that in just one second. I wanted to just maybe 
uh, talk about it just a little because yeah. you and I are the directors or and the writers of this sketch. Hey man, I gotta tell you something. It was my initial fruitful I- or my initial little idea, but you helped me flesh it out. Yeah, you added a ton of dialogue. Well, stuff, I think so. you were the primary writer on this one. Yeah. Well, yeah, I came from me just like. Um, so the Karam and Paul project, I know a lot of you guys may have not seen it. We haven't done a great job of marketing that either. We, we really need to pull it together. We both are just too busy. We've got to pull our heads out of our asses and figure out how to market and be successful entertaining people. Yeah. Entertainment people. Because we haven't marketed Karam and Paul a lot. But anyway, Karam and Paul is our project. We have a couple sketches out so far. Mm-hmm. And uh, one of them was, uh, what was it called again? I always forget the name. Of the Tested episode. Positive, I think. Tested Positive. The first we Tested Positive. And we also have uh, Jamie and Ronnie. Yeah, uh, the part first, one. yeah, the first edition of Jamie and Ronnie. Uh, and they're and they're f- just f- goofy sketches. It's uh, Karam and Paul. Yeah. We have a st- theme song. It's Karam Paul. It's Karam and Paul. It's Snacky and Peel. Still a big deal. <laughs> yeah, there's an alternate line, right? Yeah, yeah I think so. Karam and Paul. It's Karam and Paul. Mm-hmm. Snacky and Peel. You just, just have, have to deal. deal. Yeah, that's what I was doing. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, yeah. beautiful, beautiful little beautiful tune. song. Good, good singing from you. Uh, we had and a, if you want to hear it, you're going to have to listen to so, our sketches. Yeah, we got a YouTube channel at Karam and Paul. Yeah. Um, but anyway, you can check out some of the sketches. I think Tessa Paz was decent. Jamie and Ronnie is, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that one, but I love all my babies, whatever. It's all Yeah, cute. yeah, yeah. It's all I think it's it, like Jamie and Ronnie uh, was our first attempt at writing a sketch together. Or actually our second because the first one we didn't get to make. And it was a really complicated yeah. process because we and it's it my into fault. A short it's film. my fault because yeah. it's kind of my, it's kind of my fault. But also, how else are you supposed to do it? Well, the way it was was it was supposed to be two guys on a Skype call or whatever Zoom call, yeah. if you will. Actually, it was FaceTime. Extremely but. prescient for this time, right? Uh, it, it was, was two guys ago. stuck in quarantine for ten years. It was done during COVID. Yeah, yeah. And it was two guys, and it's still we got two more. Pe- we got some more Jamie and Ronnie coming out. We we released it. It was supposed to be one long thing, ten minutes. It ended up being we released the first two minute segment. We're gonna do two other two three minute segments. Yeah, yeah. Because it maybe, almost kind of turned into like a short little film, basically, instead of yeah. like a three minute sketch or whatever. I don't know how it just. So it's two happened. guys stuck in COVID. Yeah. Forever, ten years into quarantine, and. I play Ronnie, and Ronnie is a recently divorced man who is super lonely and really misses the old days. Yeah. And you play Jamie. He's hoping to get after it. Yeah, I want to get after it. I want to get some tail. I want to go back to the beach and look at girls and be creepy and all this other stuff, whatever middle-aged men do. Mm -hmm. And you, and they're they're particularly creepy. They're extra creepy. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's not like these guys are not fully normal. Really, really, what's wrong with America? Basically. <laughs> <laughs> it's what all the feminists are fighting against. Exactly. And yeah. uh, you play uh, Ronnie, or sorry, Jamie, who's yeah. a little bit nicer, but also you're married and you're stuck inside with your wife, Karen. Um, I always thought that they weren't married uh, in that sketch. I, I don't was, know why it, it just would matter. Somehow it like melded together. Yeah, but like he's had a, a live-in girlfriend I for a while. I think that he's married, but I don't know why. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. For the interpretation. For, yeah, yeah. You guys get the idea. You can, you can decide. Are you trying, not to, put a, are you trying not to put a negative spin on marriage? Are you trying to be like, no, save, no, save no, the no, sanctity no. of No, such? for some reason, that's just the way I always saw that character is just like he... He actually kind of found her during uh, like right before the quarantine or uh, as it went on. And uh, has been living with her for a long time. That's like well, so it's been ten years. So why the yeah, hell has he put a ring yeah, on it? Yeah, I thought he well, would put a ring on. They're probably just waiting. I feel like she's got, waiting for it no, to be but, safe. I, okay, maybe I see your point. She's mm. she wants to have a she wants to have a beautiful destination w- wedding in Hawaii. Yeah, exactly, and yeah. she's waiting. So okay, I yeah, see. Yeah, yeah. But then again, I feel like they must be engaged because I feel like she wouldn't let him. She she's so po- and Karen is like so domineering mm-hmm. that you are hiding your conversation like you're like trying to hide Ronnie's disgusting discourse. Yeah, well, if you have a gross friend, I mean, at some point the woman might be like, Mm-mm, "No." Well, it's anyway, so you can check that out. But that was our first one. Our second one is Tested Positive where I play Cheryl who apparently recently hooked up with uh wait. Ryan. Ryan. Yeah, yeah. I feel like that one I I know I know maybe we didn't we feel like the timing of it wasn't perfect like the uh we didn't yeah, get Yeah, like it's I it's think that one has I think that one has humor. I think that one has humor in it like for sure. Oh, no, is there nuggets in here that are funny? Yes. If you want to see me dress as a woman. See... If you want to see Karen beautiful. Actually, I wasn't too bad as a well, I was pretty bad. <laughs> if you want to see Karen as a woman, you can watch go type in uh fucking I can't even remember right. Tested, tested positive yeah, Karen tested positive. Tested positive. And look for 80s jokes is all I'm saying. Yeah, it's look like for 80s jokes. Look for 80s theme joke. Yeah. I think like... Don't give away. Don't give it away. You know, what's really cool about it is uh, doing multiple sketches, uh, shooting at different locations, things like that. 
from writing to the editing process to the like the pruning down of the script to the development of characters to the it does like all those things then you've got like you do a really good job of thinking about like set design and uh uh what would that be like props and and uh what would some what would be another term for that that kind of stuff well you gotta want you gotta think about everything set dress the the fit you want here you want to hear another fancy uh fucking wardrobe go ahead a misanthrope word an infinite jest word Mm -hmm. uh mise-en-scene Mise-en-scene. Mise-en-scene is a French word that means the things in the screen. Wow. It's a term used all the time, believe it or not, in film circles and film studies. Yeah, well, because film essentially started arguably in France, right? Oh, well, yeah, with the yeah. Lumiere brothers mm-hmm. uh, and the train and shit. But basically, yeah. uh, so this is our third sketch, and yeah, I, think yeah. I think it's funny. The premise of this one is actually not that far off from Jamie and Ronnie, not completely far off. Where it's an old somebody from the past who will not go away, kind of. Yeah, thing. I think it's. I guess I see what you're. It's not your the exact. It's is. not the same thing at all. I, mean, I think, I think the simpler way to say it is, is it's it's we all have that person that we knew from high school or whatever that just uh, it's just getting progressively worse. Like whatever they inform you about, you're just at first you try to be compassionate, like oh my gosh, can't believe this happened to you. And by the time, the, like the third thing that they say about like whatever crazy thing that's happened in their lives. You're you're like this sounds like it has to be a lie. It sounds ridiculous. Also, we were never that close. Won't stop talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Won't we're never stop that talking. Close. That so guy you saw from the past much. or from high school, they yeah. see you. Oh my God, it's Carol Mantha. You're like, yeah, oh my, my God, gosh. It's Bob Smith. They're like, oh, not again. No. Like you don't want to see Bob Smith. Like Bob Smith. And at this point, but the re- but the reason why I hope this is going to be a funny sketch, hopefully, is because it's taken so far. Like it's ta- that idea is taken so ridiculously into the character of Don yeah, T- yeah. I play Don Tiddlywinks. Don Tiddlywinks basically looks like if Oscar from Sesame Street jumped out of the trash can and was a human. Like that's <laughs> pretty much what he's dressed like. Yeah. He actually looks kind of like a French homeless man, really. He's got, got like, he's like all greasy. <laughs> he's got like a, he's got like, <laughs> he's wearing a scarf. Like why is he wearing a scarf? I don't know. Syracuse. I don't know. But uh, I loved your wardrobe choices. And I poured excellent. grease all over myself. Like I just poured it. Guzzled, yeah, like I think a, you a might whole have, thing of olive oil. Did you roll around in the dirt as well? I also rolled around in okay, the dirt. Yeah. So we're going to show you that now live in just a moment. Um, but I, I really like this idea of like, it actually came from, I guess the original, original, original thing was going to the skate park last year with my friend Skylar. And this is the inspiration <laughs> for it. And there was just like this home, basically a homeless guy there who would not stop. He literally kept saying, hey, man, I got to tell you something, man. <laughs> hey man I gotta tell you something like, and we were trying to do this trick and we were trying to do this handrail which we, neither of us had ever done a handrail before so it's really scary it's like a rail it's higher up and down mm, a stair set yeah, yeah. like oh my god we were scared we were trying to do board slides down it and he, every time we are about to go to do it he would be like I gotta tell you something and, you, and you'd be like for the first two three times you're like yes what is it or whatever you know my mother she uh, she had an accident she's not doing you know what I'm saying and he was kind of like half schizo too so it didn't even make any sense and you're like yeah man he's like you know good vibes you know what I'm saying like I'm all love love to everybody you know what I'm saying and you're like yeah 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 yeah. because so you were planning what eventually you, had to, eventually you had to start yeah. to ignore him and and actually almost this, I believe it was the same day I'm sure and this is at the Eastwood Skate Park so apparently this is a place maybe you want to avoid if you don't want to get your ears ear abused getting an ear beating mm-hmm. we, we were there same day maybe that guy finally shut up or went away to go smoke a cigarette or something <sighs> Another guy shows up, a Mexican guy, all right, mm. comes over to me. Hey, man, how you doing? I'm uh, doing all right, trying to skate here. He's like, you know, I come here with my son. He watches you. He thinks you're a great skater. I'm like, I've never been here before. <laughs> He's like, listen, I got to tell you something. I'm like, please don't. He's like, I got to tell you something. He's like, listen, you know, when we smoke weed here, you know what I'm saying? I don't care if you smoke weed. I'm like, I'm, uh, yeah, okay. okay. I'm not even smoking any weed. I'm not, even, I'm not yeah. even smoking any weed yeah. at the time. He's like, yeah. you know, when you smoke weed at this park, you know what I'm saying? I don't care if you smoke some weed, man, but you got to get away. You got to go out from the park, you know, because we got kids here. Not know? around the kids. I'm like, I would, I com- actually, I completely agree. You know what I'm saying? I don't really like when people smoke weed in front of kids. Like, I don't think that's cool. Like, I, I agree with you. Yeah. He's like, nah, nah, nah. I got to tell you something. I got to tell you something. He's like, <laughs> You know when we smoke weed here, it's like, we gotta get the kids. We gotta go away from the kids. I'm like, I understand. Absolutely, I would. Yeah. I, you know, that's a valiant effort. That's a brave thing to. Yeah, I complete. Yeah, no, he, but you're not listening. We gotta get the weed from the. I'm like, so anyway. Sure. Yeah. Hence, hey man, I gotta tell you something was born. It's just like yeah, this yeah. guy who won't stop talking to you and is fused with the idea of the guy from the past. Not who doesn't want to. Yeah. It reminds ha- it reminds me of uh, there's a there's a line from Community I can't remember the context but who cares 
But someone, he just literally yells at one point, no one's on the other side of this argument. <laughs> yeah, you're, like, you're arguing. Nobody's with, against you. You're arguing with Amir right now. Like, yeah, yeah, like, not, like we all agreed, but you didn't hear me agree. No, you didn't. Yeah, you didn't <laughs> no. When you smoked the weed. Around the back. You got to go around the corner. You got to go, 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 go around the corner. Go on, not around the kid. Yeah. So anyway, that's, I don't know what we've, we've talked to you off about the, how we've got this creative process going. So here I'm going to, we're going to premiere it live. It's not a hundred billion percent finished, but it's like 99% finished. Wow. Okay. Um, it's basically there. So we're going to show you guys right now. So if you are watching this not live, I would, I would kind of recommend probably, uh, you know, type it in. Hey man, I got to tell you something. It should be up by the time you watch this and watching it by yourself. Cause we're going to maybe be commenting over the top of it and stuff. And that might be annoying. Yeah. Um, so if you're watching this not live, I recommend. And uh, give us the views. Pausing go us. to yeah, YouTube check out and give Paul. us the views. Karim yeah. and Paul, hey man, I got to tell you something. But mm -hmm. let's go ahead and premiere that right now. Which is not out if you're watching live. It's not out yet, but it will be dropping so gonna, yeah. imminently, like tomorrow. We're going we're gonna to go for a tomorrow premiere. So tomorrow is right, the 26th. Tomorrow premiere. Hey man, yeah, I got to tell you something. Set your calendar. So. Alarm clock. Let's go ahead and uh, try to pull this up. It's going to be tough to. We, get this thing going here so yeah. we're gonna do that are you gonna stand up and just hold it to the screen i should i, I wonder what if there's like a hundred <laughs> what if we got like a hundred people on live right now uh i, I, don't, I don't, don't tell me the truth i right? would genuinely be surprised but yeah yes i would as well yeah we probably have my mother and uh <laughs> like a bot like <laughs> <laughs> all right and now the world premiere of hey man i gotta tell you something i hope you guys can kind of hear it i don't know i'm gonna maybe try to push this so that we can kind of this is this is the DVD commentary. This is the like that's why you're that's why we're listening to this, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So, well, you might want the mic closer to you if you're gonna talk. True, but I want. True. Oh, you're right because they don't need mm. they don't need I can dub it in to the actual. So uh, mark that in. That's uh that's 36 minutes and 48 seconds. Uh, in Paul, you're right. That was the main takeaway of this podcast. Uh, there we go. We did it. <laughs> All right, guys. And the world premiere of Hey Man, I Gotta Tell You Something happens now. Hey, man. Is that baby flu again? Oh, oh, um, Don. Um, Don. Ken Evans. Mm -hmm. Remember me? High school? The lunch the class. class? I remember that gesture, that's for sure. Well, shit, Bobby. You're looking good. <laughs> well, thanks. You're looking, um... I bet! I mean, like, French homeless man. Yeah, yeah, yeah uh, absolutely. Stretch you know, shirt. doing okay. Mindy and I <laughs> just had our I'm second I'm just thinking the fact that we had to clean up beer because uh, we spilled uh, right a beer that we were checking. Oh, you mean the R's, <laughs> but, uh, uh yeah. you probably, yeah. uh... You probably know what that's like. Can you imagine somebody put their car into your car? You do? Like, <laughs> put the basket bad. into your car. That's yeah. just insane. Are you saying things are going septic? <laughs> got laid off at the factory. What factory? Got blasted <laughs> yeah. wife. What skills did he have? Is that like the like right? <laughs> C in one teacup? Or? Oh, oh, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> she left the first circus clown. Oh my gosh, she's done. That's one circus. Story. Yeah, it's, they're all closed. Like, it's just not. Listen, it is always <laughs> sad to see whenever marriage struggles. Contract leprosy in Louisiana. <laughs> That's just poetry right now. Bobby, we're but... talking about nasty. <laughs> no. Nasty or. Okay, okay, okay. okay. All, right. All, right. all right, all right, all right. And move right. back in with mother. <laughs> she went ahead and had herself in the accident. <laughs> she, uh, is she okay? She took a shit on my Persian rug. I just don't see a I'm, scenario where he owns a Persian rug. I'm not. Persian I tell you, Bobby, the corn just <laughs> runs right through her. I could definitely <laughs> see a scenario where the corn <laughs> runs right through her, though. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell yeah. you something else, Bobo. Bought a used car a while back. Oh my it's God. it's impossible to be interested in this thing. You know, like, you gotta now, be, I gotta get out of here. KFC, he owns a, a part of my vehicle. <laughs> I am so ashamed, listen, but also uh, so proud listen, of my performance. Uh, I, I gotta get going. I think you know, he should really feel nice both of those things. I think you feel good about yours. You did a good stuff, job of like the thing, I trying to be that polite guy, but also starting to get ashy as time goes on. So I'm gonna have to get leave. Show them the We found the humor in it at times. We did? After the freaking pedal went. After the freaking pedal went through the floor of the car. Yeah. I drove into the middle of the desert. And I set it ablaze. 
I, I don't know how KFC likes the chicken burger. <laughs> I hope they like the cars extra crispy. <laughs> Uh, I, I think I think this guy. Okay, showed uh, them. All right. This hey, is listen, the funniest it's line really he's nice ever had. You. Like he believes <laughs> this is the funniest. Like he's <laughs> delivered this line to multiple people. Do you think he doesn't notice that people are laughing? I don't know. I like it. I like it. Look out! Hey, listen. Okay. Okay. I gotta tell you somebody. I gotta tell you something. Thank you for uh, participating in the world premiere. A famous yeah, thing, something. yeah. Hopefully next time we'll premiere at a con film festival or something. Oh, yeah, a con. Can or whatever it's called. Can't. <laughs> it's not can. I think the pretentious really make sure they don't say uh, a, a soft A. They'd say, or they'd say con. This is turning into a very French episode. Yeah. Unfortunately, I know parlez-vous français, but yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I spoke Spanish in the French episode. Yeah, you proved you, proved you can handle your Spanish. No yeah, but doubt. not the French, so I'm really disappointed. Everyone's like, if I'm not sure what tequila to order... I'm going to ask Karim to help I'm not, If I'm not sure what quesadilla to order, I'm going to ask Karim. <laughs> uh, I don't know my way around the Taco Bell menu, but uh, I'll let Karim handle that for me. In Spanish, actually, it's Karam. 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 So that was, that was Hey Man. I really hope you guys liked it. I don't know. I, I'm excited. I'm really excited about this one. I think it's fun. It took forever to edit, and it was uh, we had so many angles. I think as a director or whatever, I'm going to have to figure out just like how to slim down the old process here because it's, it's just too bloated every time same thing with uh hey man we got it we figured, finally got it eventually but i just feel like jamie and ronnie also there was like seventeen thousand angles and takes and it's just like hey man you're gonna have to perform like just do a take and just let it happen like i don't know but uh yeah man so uh oh I got a bounce in five to ten minutes. What this guy's a <laughs> this guy's literally a dissenter over here. Yeah, he's yeah. trying to he's trying to ruin this podcast. No, uh, I'm not. I was trying to. <laughs> All right, so we got we got no more than ten minutes. So, um, in other in in news, if you guys haven't seen it, did you guys see the John McAfee thing? Did you see the John McAfee? No, thing? I didn't. And uh, uh, what what's Dude, the deal? Literally like, the crazy. What's going on? Literally, okay. So now it's the new one is John McAfee didn't kill himself. Like we had John Jeffrey McAfee. Epstein didn't kill himself. Now we have mm -hmm. John McAfee didn't kill himself. Yeah. You know? I'm going to start getting ahead of it and just say people who are still alive didn't kill themselves because <laughs> that way it's at least true. This guy actually is quoted in 2020 <laughs> so, sometime in 2020 saying, hey, if I ever end up suicided, know that I didn't kill myself. Yeah. He also got a tattoo that same year that said whacked or whatever on his arm, which basically was supposed to mean I was whacked if, okay. I, if you find out I was killed myself. And now his his widow or whatever, his fiance or whatever, is coming out and saying he wasn't suicidal. Oh, but he was man. found dead hanging in a Spanish prison where he was being about to be extradited to the United States for tax evasion. Got you. And was he hanging from... Uh what was Epstein uh, like strangled from? Like, oh, he was a, hanging, he was like too low of a place for from a like a piece work. of linguine or something. <laughs> <laughs> he used a, a piece of old pasta. Yeah, yeah, it was cooked too. I don't yeah. know how it helped. It was an unbelievable. Yeah, it held together. Physics. Yeah, and uh, Hillary Clinton was seen at the scene, but uh, yeah, yeah. no one cared. And she was there to visit just to pray for him. Yeah, she was on the visitor yeah, book that day, was, but she was visiting yeah. Vince Foster. Wait, who? Uh, sorry. <laughs> Do you <laughs> know Vince Foster? No. Oh, that's the guy that killed himself in the in the Clinton White House in the nineties. Everybody's like, that's where this all started from. This is what I really want to. The know. Clinton body count. This is incredible. Uh, I just started using the word "suicided." Did someone <laughs> else start using it uh, at the same time? Like, is that like a term that I can't act like we, you, me, our group of friends started coining? Oh, is no. everyone using that phrase? It's been around. Okay. Suicide has been around, and it's always the joke is about the Clinton body count. Got you. Okay, so so uh, I probably started using it right around the Epstein thing. Uh, was it a thing before that, or am I am I late to the game? Is what I want to know. Um, bro, I wouldn't I wouldn't know, but I do know that it's John McAfee. All I know is like John McAfee is a, le a legend. I, I know you don't know about him. If you don't know about him, look up John McAfee. Everybody remembers for like 20 years how like every single PC you would buy had McAfee antivirus installed. I thought it was McAfee, but yeah. Sure, maybe it's uh, – thank you. It yeah. could be John McAfee I, if I'm messing things up. 
Um, John McAfee. Uh, and anyway, Max don't need McAfee. We all remember that whole jingle, right? Oh no, no I didn't no, even know that's about that. That's not one. a thing. That's something I was going to talk about Apple too. <laughs> so anyway, he, it's crazy. Like he was living this insane life for like 10 or 15 years. Like after he got famous selling that software, he made a bunch of money. He was worth a hundred million dollars. He didn't want to pay taxes. The guy was like one of those like real anti-tax freaks. Yeah. Yeah. I think I heard, did he, was he in the news cycle a little while ago for, for tax evasion stuff? Oh, he's been in the news in and out. Okay. And so he moved down to like Belize and there's this famous photo I showed you. Maybe I'll pop it up in the podcast if yeah. I can remember to of like, he's got like a, a shotgun in like the Belize forest or whatever. Yeah. And apparently he lived like a mafia kingpin down there. Like he had a team of guys with guns and stuff and <laughs> yeah. they, they would intimidate anybody who bothered him and stuff like that. Yeah. It was nuts. And he had, he was just going around the world. He's big into crypto too eventually. And he was just trying to evade taxes. And so finally they called him and he was living in Barcelona partying and they were like, uh, the U S you know partnered with the with the Spanish government to try to put him away but he put him they put him in prison and all of a sudden he's suicided and yeah, it's just really it's, weird it's, it's a real bummer to, to the idea that he committed suicide or didn't because when when somebody makes an antivirus i mean you really got to hope that they go down with the poetic justice of like dying from a virus you know like that's that's usually like it would be like oh how, how did how did uh how did McAfee die and then be like oh Zika yeah. virus. And it's just, it'd be like the perfect little poetic. poetic they, should have, they should have COVIDed him. You know what I mean? should have been COVIDed That's okay. That's what you're saying. Yeah, like he should have gotten a virus. Like that's yeah. what it should have been, you know? <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? I, I just understood the joke. Okay, I, I just my, thought my, my CPU took a moment to, it was, to whir up and. Your RAM just caught up? <laughs> it was like a turbo. It took a minute. I had to rev it up for a Is second that, for okay. it to, to kick in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that happens when you're overclocking. Like it, you, sometimes you'll get delayed. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Crazy shit. Um, I know you got like three minutes. What time? Uh, what time are we on on the pod? Oh, we're we're a little over forty five. Just about. Okay. Um, well, I would say I'll keep going without you, but I don't know if it's possible. Oh, you can, you can, you can. You do. I can. Better. You got these live viewers. No, I don't mean like that. I mean like your stuff here. Does it matter? Oh. Um, I like yeah, I'll just come back later. I'll just come back. Oh, yeah, uh, you got to go to Coleman's anyway. Yeah, yeah. I'll just swing by after that. Is that okay? Yeah. Um. But uh, yeah, go whenever you gotta go. If you gotta go now or whatever, if you gotta go in a minute or whatever. But uh, I was just gonna say too with Ma- McAfee, he just reminded me because I was talking about this yesterday with you. And uh, I think that speaking of like tech stuff, I think Apple has fallen off, dude. You think so? Really? I think Apple's still a pretty good product. I have the iPhone; it's over there. Use live streaming; it's a pretty good product. But I I truly believe ever since Steve Jobs and his smug Argyle ass died or whatever, like in his fruit eating fucking smug capitalist shit, you know, guy was a weirdo. Yeah. And apparently right? a dick. Pretty awesome though, right? Well, he only ate fruit. Really? Yeah. He was a fruititarian. Wow. That seems... And he also founded Apple. Which and he is wasn't weird. diabetic. And he eventually died of pancreatic cancer. I don't know if that's related or not. Okay. Hmm. Uh, maybe it was too much fruit or too much sugar or something. Who knows? Uh, <laughs> but he was, yeah, look it up. He was a very, very um, quirky man. Yeah, but, but he I wouldn't think, eat apples, I hear, right? I don't know. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's a forbidden fruit. <laughs> he only he only ate. So I think that ever since he died, I think Apple has fallen off. Like it's particularly like iOS. Like we were using Final Cut yesterday. I think it's the newest version is not as good. And I don't think that iOS is good. I think if you open up I, I had I had a phone in the early like freshman year of college. That's about twenty eleven. So that's about more or less 10 years ago, I had an iPhone. And then I went to Android for almost 10 years and came back. Gotcha. When I used to have an Android, an iPhone, like 2011-ish area, 2012-ish area, I don't think the – if you open up your menu on an iPhone, I feel like there was not literally 80 things to click. Mm. If you open up your – go ahead if you've got one right now. Open up your Apple iOS device. Open up your iPhone or your iPad and t- just go to menu. And notice that not only are there like the five main submenus, then there's another ten main submenus, and then every single application on your device is listed. So it's just this horrible long screen. In order to navigate it, you really have to search the menu. Yeah. I think they need a fascist like Jobs come back and just whip them back into shape. He needs to come out of the grave. Somebody has to figure out how to Frankenstein him back into shape. Well, I, the, the word you kept using yesterday was intuitive. It's just not as intuitive it as isn't. it used to be. Or, or um, I think another word could be ergonomic. It's just lacking. Uh, the user interface ergonomic nature, like this is where it should be, right? Um, and it's not like it's totally lost that, but I think one of the, the major major departures from Jobs, and I don't know if you know this or not, but the, the, the original vision from Jobs for the iPhone was that it would be a device you could use with one hand. And for a long time, you guys may remember that iPhones were resistant uh, to grow in size. Mm. They wanted to remain in that, was that same. Through, was that through Steve Jobs' life? Like, did he? Not um, I think it was even well after his life. 
there was a there was a refusal to get bigger but then they started seeing uh larger and larger amounts of the market share uh be taken away from them from larger phones sure i.e the samsung's which is obviously like their main it's, competitor. It's almost. main competitor. I mean, you could list off LGs and all the other crap, but you you understand what I'm saying is larger phones were more popular because pe- more and more people. Which I, I, if you had if you had uh, asked me like 12 years ago, hey, do you think people are gonna watch movies, entire movies on their phone? Yeah, I would have been like, nah, man, I want a big screen, and I would have thought everyone agreed. But that doesn't seem to be the case. People are like, you know what makes the screen bigger? Moving it a little closer to my face. <laughs> um, so, which, you know, like I'm not saying they're wrong. Like, obviously, people are using their phones for this. So, um, they wanted bigger phones. They wanted bigger phones. And so, that was a major departure from the original vision was one hand so use. When you use the word ergonomic, you mean very, yeah, very much so, the way in which it used to fit in the palm of your yeah, hand. And I'm not saying that that's right, wrong, or in, uh, different, but it is a way in which instead of trailblazing and uh, setting the trends for the market, this is, is an example where Apple is, uh, so, I don't want to say copying, but he, they are literally bending to what the trends of the, so, of the consumer So now was. Tim yeah. Cook, the imposter Tim Cook, he's not Steve Jobs, but Tim Cook, he's like, oh, we got bigger screen. Yeah. Now we can fit everything into the menu. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, what do you, why did you need to do, like, there is no reason why every app should be listed on the, on the main, like the main menu page. There should be a button that says apps. You open it and then see every app or whatever or app settings. There should not be every single app on your device so that the main menu is – you have to scroll like 10 – like three I think times. I think you're right to a point. Like I like a website and I know you're not talking about a website, but I like a website We're talking about some different, and designs. Different, different screens. Not – like you know how like a lot of modern websites are literally just one continuous scroll. Yeah. Like really – like if you click on the buttons at the top, you're just moving to a different part on that sure. scroll. Okay. So so like one infinite page if you will and, the, and, and like likewise what you're saying – is you want some some buttons to click in to go to new windows or new screens? Yeah, now I want simplicity. And you need a, you need a balance. You can't just have windows. Well, here's the thing: on is I'm, I consider myself a, I worlds. consider myself a tech savvy guy. All right, yeah. I'm pretty. Te- I'm not like a, a coder. I'm like my friend Sam or something. I'm not able to like actually. Yeah. But software wise, I've always been savvy. Always. When when I was younger, my dad always used to make me get the TV out and be like, "Oh, it's a new TV. Karen, go set up the remote." Yeah, remote exactly. I was exactly. always good with that stuff. Yeah. And now I find myself. I'm still 28. I'm not old yet. And I get my new little iPhone 12, 11 or whatever, and I still don't fully understand it. Like I'm like, I don't even know where to go in the menu half the time these days. It's not intuitive. Gotcha. For for different for different things, I'm like searching around. What I and have you to, think you're of, I have to of do, a proper age to be able to make that criticism. Yeah, and I'm yeah. like, and now it is where you you basically have to over rely on the Omni search. You know what I mean? Which I love. Um, it's not even what they call it. They call it the spotlight on your gotcha, computer gotcha, and they call gotcha. somebody and then like, it's it's the it's the one where you pull down a little bit and then you click 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 yeah you just pull it down and type it in i get that that's great it's like a search engine for settings nice it's but like amazing but how should, do we need why do you that? have to rely on that 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 shouldn't be our your go-to all, all the other long. day my mom's like my ipad has, it doesn't have any room left yeah. like what do we do uh, icloud doesn't really work i'm like all right let me take a look i'm i'm going through ipad there's like so many sub menus and so many menus i'm mm-hmm. like Mom, I, even I don't know what's going on. And it's like they want you to rely on their nerds at the store. You got to go in there and bow down to the the, the what was idol the word of iPhone. For, for, for bowing down that, that people did venerate. You need to venerate, venerate the, uh, the like. Venerate. What even is? What are we venerating at the iPhone store? Like, what even is it? Is it just like the white tables? Is it the what? What is like the? Well, the whole vision I think is so that you can feel like you're inside a computer. Like that's what like you're living here. Um. I, I feel like I've been watching Max progressively take a turn for the worst. I think and so. maybe they are still innovating. Do you have anything to say about Max? I think that's so this is, I think Spotlight was a great feature. This that, is one I think thing, that might have been post jobs. That might have been the one good thing post jobs. Yeah. I think Spotlight. And the M1 chip is also seemingly amazing. I'll say this before I depart, because I do have to go. Uh if you look at the trends of MacBook Pros uh over the last, let's say, eight years, ten years, whatever it is. I don't know the exact number, so don't stress on that. But what you've seen is is uh uh them uh, essentially Apple responding to the fact that the MacBook Air sold really well. Their lightest weight, uh, not literally their lightest weight anymore, but lightweight, uh, low profile, uh, slim, slim, very, very stripped down on power, uh, and totally not modular. You couldn't really replace much mm-hmm. and eventually couldn't replace anything mm-hmm. or fix anything on your own inside of a MacBook Air. And if you've seen what happened to the MacBook Pros is they've gotten slimmer, they've gotten lighter, Mm -hmm. they've gotten a little airier, if you will. They haven't been as powerful, uh, and and they also are pretty much not modular at all anymore. 
So you can't oh, so fix them or change them or upgrade them the way right. that like, these older bad boys that I, I really like these older ones. You could change the hard drive. Even, you can change out the This is 2015. RAM. I think it might have been one of the last years where it was like still semi-possible. Some, some things the RAM, to change, yeah. Whatever, the hard so, drive. But basically they're making less power, like like at least, the, le, at least the horsepower, the gigahertz on the processor, that's stripped down. Really? I thought, was, the, I thought the M1 was... Uh, maybe the M1 is a, is a new level of innovation that they just hit. And I said, you know, maybe they are still innovating in some ways. But I... The original vision was the MacBook Pro is a laptop for pros. It is for professional people who know how to modify their computers. Mm. And 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 you, we, this is for people who want to get under the hood. And and they that was literally Steve Jobs Jobs vision for it from what really? I understand. I'm so surprised. now it's, I think, it's totally removed from that. Why did Steve now. Jobs pass away? I do not remember the date. You could probably look that up. So those are some of the things that have made me very hesitant to buy a newer mo- a model Mac Pro um, or a new model Mac in general. Although, what was it called? The M10? Interesting, interesting or enough, M1? he died in 2011, which is yeah. about when I used to have an iPhone. Gotcha. Is it M1? Is that what the new um, The new processor? chips are called M1s. Yeah, okay. So those have piqued my interest again. And and, and, and the and coolest, one of the coolest things about too is that like they don't yeah. even, they barely need to even be cooled. They're so like, they're so cold, like they're so heatless or something. Uh, oh, really? There's like, I don't know the exact technology behind them, but they're really powerful. Um, but yeah, that's our little criticism of Apple. It's something I'm really passionate about. I love Apple products, but I tend to uh, yeah. like I like I tend to really love the ones that are a little older. I my the you know, modular I, stuff. I literally have a Mac Pro cheese grater, uh, just an absolute monster. I usually brag about it, and no one's impressed, but you should be. This is the forum for it's it. It's your fault. You know what I mean? Like, uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> I don't know. I think you referenced something. Have you ever have that where you make an incredible reference or incredible joke in, in a conversation? No one notices it, and like you're literally, I've literally started to verbalize this sometimes. Like, that deserved more. It did. It deserved it, more. Like, <laughs> all I know, all I can say is, in their defense, my old MacBook Pro 2011 model, yeah, was uh, I think it was released probably in 2010, but at any rate, that lasted until basically last year. That Incredible. lasted for a solid decade, and it was a good computer. I must have edited. 40 videos on yeah. the computer of different lengths. You know what I mean? I was running that thing at full speed ahead. Yep. Finally, eventually, the graphics card passed out. Wow. And uh, the, Which means it was running on the... Because it has two graphics cards. But you, you're somebody who literally video edited uh, on that thing for years. Years. 10 years, years straight. Grinding and, it half, it. and it was yeah. like probably half the time over. You could feel it. It was boiling, but it didn't matter. The thing was such a strong... The components were so good, it didn't matter. Hmm. So anyway, that's our criticism. How much... Oh, I know you're going to go. What time I, are we at now? Um, we're, we're just under an hour. Okay. Just under. All right. Um, I'm not sure if I'm. I, I am sorry now. to bow out. Oh, it's okay. Man. Yeah, bow out, bow out. Um, I guess I'll talk to the viewers really quick before we go about this book because it was really important. Thanks for having me, Kay. Nice to see you, Paul. C- come back this afternoon and uh, see the finished. Uh, hey, man, I gotta tell you something and get your stuff and and all that. It sounds like a plan. Yeah. All right. So peas out, peas out. I'm gonna finish. You. I, I'm not gonna do much longer. I just want to do five minutes on this book. I read this I can't book. Wait to hear, I can't wait to listen to this so I get to hear about this book. This book, Infinite I, Jest, yeah. honestly was one of the most important books I've ever read. I was tr- I tried to read it back in 20... It doesn't matter about that. Don't worry. <laughs> You're trying to salvage, uh, salvage something that's long... F- <laughs> what? <laughs> he puts up the backup audio recorder. He puts it on in the last five minutes of my podcast. This is the type of shit I deal with, all right? This is not... <laughs> God damn it. This book, I tried to read it back in 2010, 2011. I got to about 500 pages and, and fell apart because it was just, it's a lot. You got to be ready for it. You got to be ready for it. You can't, you got to focus. It took me a month this time to re- read this uh, from front to back, from cover to cover. And Infinite Jest is written by David Foster Wallace. There's a mythos around David Foster Wallace. He's one of those, you know, great artists who tragically eventually, uh, you know, died of suicide, you know, self-inflicted death, you know, after doing so much great work. It's like, oh, this whole mythos of the troubled artist and all that other stuff. So, you know, he's an interesting guy. He was a, uh, he was into uh, philosophy and English and, and he turned into a writer. Um, at one time he lived in Syracuse, which is where we're broadcasting today. He lived in Syracuse and taught at the university while he was writing this book in the early 90s. And so Infinite Jess, I would like to say, uh, is unbelievably prescient, like unbelievably uh, future proof. He wrote it almost 30 years ago. It was released in 96, however, but it was, you know, written in the early 90s, more or less. It's over a thousand pages long, but it's an unbelievable meditation on America's obsession with entertainment and preoccupation. And he draws amazing parallels with that and addiction. 
uh, substance abuse. Uh, so some of the characters, some of the main characters, the main character, if you will, in the beginning is somebody named Hale in Candenza. It's an unbelievably complicated novel. It's hard for me to go into the plot, but this will not, I won't have any spoilers. Hale is, uh, when we first meet him, we know he's an extremely intelligent young man. He's at a tennis academy, Enfield Tennis Academy in Boston. When we first meet him, he's doing an interview for Arizona State to get in as, uh, on a scholarship for playing tennis. And you, hear, you see his inner dialogue, and it's unbelievably flowery. It's unbelievably illusion-filled. He's talking about literature, and he's talking about Byzantine erotica. He's talking about four-year transformations in mathematics and science and all that stuff. So he's obviously unbelievably in, intelligent young man. And finally, he's in this interview, right? And it's like... The tennis coach is talking for him. The head of the academy is talking for him. Finally, the Arizona State people are like, listen, we need to talk to Hale. Hale needs to speak. So Hale finally opens his mouth and he's like, I, he's like, yes, I understand my test scores have been weird lately. I get it. I get that things look strange in my transcripts. Trust me, I'm smart. I'm intelligent. I'm self-aware. I devour books. I spend hours in libraries. I'm this, I'm that, I'm the other. Yes, I'm a, I play tennis, but I'm not just a jock. I also have a mind. Please accept me to your program. And he goes, he does a speech, and all of a sudden, all of the people at Arizona State are flabbergasted. They're screaming. They're like, oh, my God, what? A, put him down. Put him down. They have to put him against the floor and, and hold him. They're like, what, is, what he just said was like sub-animalian. What, what are those noises he's making? He's not speaking. Like, and you're like, what is going on with this person? Like, and so that's how it opens, and that's, it's, um, it starts in the, at the end. That's the end of the book. We go back in time. It goes into this crazy plot basically involving him. He's a marijuana addict. He's a savant. He's a smart kid at this tennis academy. His family is crazy. His father was a genius drunken filmmaker who was also into optics. He had designed, he had ultimately created this one movie called Infinite Jest, which is so engrossing and so pleasure-filled. It's so amazing that if you start watching the movie, you will not be able to stop. You won't care about eating. You won't care about sleeping. You won't care about drinking. You will die of pure pleasure watching this movie. So that's his family. He's got a mother. He's got a brother in the NFL. It's so complicated. But meanwhile, we have this two major plots that are taking place simultaneously. You have the plot where <laughs> we're in the near future and there's this thing where the United States has taken over basically infused with Canada and Mexico, and there's something called the concavity. The concavity is this area that used to be in Quebec that they now dump all their garbage into, basically. And so you've got the Quebeci people are very upset. They're radicalized. And so there's like the insurgent people from Canada who are basically trying to get their hands on the entertainment, Infinite Jest, so they can try to get it into as many American households as possible because they know Americans love their entertainment. And they're trying to basically destroy America so that they'll give back uh, Quebec to the Quebecis or whatever. You got that going on. So you've got these government agencies fighting that out kind of thing. Meanwhile, you've got all these different drug addicts that we're seeing on the streets of Boston and whatnot who are on, like the descriptions of the addicts are my favorite part. Like they're so addicted to their drugs. Like you've got, well, you got Hale, of course. You've also got Don Gately, who's like a, uh, basically, he basically uh, is, a, he's addicted to heroin more or less. Uh, and he is robbing houses. He's a house robber, and he's stealing things, and he's part of the streets, and Don Gately ends up somehow becoming our hero. There's a girl who wears a, a veil because she was so horribly disfigured, and she ultimately... It's... Okay. It's... I can't go into the plot anymore because it's obviously so complicated, but it is a laugh-out funny masterpiece meditation on our obsession with of being entertained, watching things being, you know, television more or less. He didn't get the phones quite right. He didn't have phones, but he did get, um, what do you call it? on-demand streaming services before they were ever around. He had that in the book. And I don't even know, like, it's just unbelievable meditation on what it is to be an American, what it is to be entertained, and how that is so similar to, to addiction. And so these characters, a lot of them go enter 12-step programs, which are on the face of it so hokey and so full of cliches, but end up helping mysteriously all of the people who to stop being addicted. My life has been changed, I think, reading this book. I think that I 
view drug use differently and I view entertainment differently and I see them in a different light and I see how enslaving both of them can be. And I know on this podcast I've talked before about maybe the insidious effect of how we are becoming cyborg, cyborg-like as a culture and getting so obsessed with our phones. And even myself, like I will all day long, especially if I'm alone, I will watch things on YouTube. I will listen to podcasts. I will, I, it's almost like I need that phone to be my friend. Obviously, it's not the phone itself. I'm listening to podcasters. I'm listening to Tim Dillon. I'm listening to Joey Diaz. I'm listening to different people talk. Lex Friedman. But it's an unbelievable meditation. I, I am so unbelievably uh, blown away by how good this was and how sustaining it was and how meaty it is. It's an encyclopedic. It's like there's so much information in this book. And there's so much absurdity in it too. He does, he's, there's parts that are so surreal. You know, It's like one of the main uh, agents of the American government who's trying to stop the entertainment spread is uh, uh, Sheepley? Steeply, Hugh, Hugh Steeply, and he's dressed as a woman, and it's like not even a good disguise. Like you can see his big hairy legs and stuff. It's like it's absurd. There's so much laugh out loudness in this book, and like the stories of addiction are so outrageous. There's a character Ken Irity in the second or third chapter, which you don't even get much of Ken Irity in the book. But in the second or third chapter, you is this, this whole portrait of this guy who's waiting in his house. He's taken three days off from work. He has. He has closed the blinds. He has ordered uh, tons of takeout food. He has uh, prepared. He has got all these movies ready to watch. He has um, drummed up his favorite pornography. He is ready for this woman to come and deliver to him a thousand grams of marijuana. And this is going to be the last time. He, this is going to be the last time that Ken smokes because he doesn't want anybody to know. And he's thrown away all the other numbers of all the other dealers. And he's thrown away all of his other, other bongs. So he, has a, he has a fresh bong to smoke out of. And he's going to smoke his last final time. It's going to be the last time he's going to smoke his thousand grams of marijuana. And finally, that's it. <laughs> it's literally outrageous. There's another scene like that with the veiled girl. More or less, she's gonna have too much fun last time. Fun, one last time, she's gonna smoke so much crack cocaine that she dies this time. She doesn't want to live anymore. She wants to eliminate her map, as he says in the book. It's the portraits of addictions and the parallels to America's uh, insistence on being entertained at every given second, and how prescient it was, and how much he predicted the future of TikTok and YouTube and podcasting and all of our constant phoneness. And yeah, there's no phones, but yet he did it so similarly. It's the guy was a genius. And I, I think it's been said a million times anyway. Everybody knows that David Foster Wallace is considered a genius. But this is a great, great, great book. And I recommend slogging through its thousand pages. And this goddamn cocksucker Wallace, man, it's got 200 pages of end notes. 200 pages. So you're flipping to the end all the time to find out some other detail. He gives you these pharmacochemical descriptions of drugs. And he gives you these whole other subplots in, in the end notes. Uh, he gives you a whole anthology of Hale's father's movies, which are all absurd. They're all, all of the plots are, how we say, like very hilarious and surreal and crazy, yet more or less they end up tying into the book. So it's like, yeah, you're sliding through four pages of, of these guys, this guy's fake movies, but they, it, it's worth it. It's worth it. And I, I missed, I, I missed this book and it's over and I miss it. I miss Don Gately and there's all these parallels to Hamlet there's some parallels to the brothers Karamazov. It is an unbelievable piece of genius. It is. Now, I will offer my criticism. <laughs> um, I will say the only thing, the only thing that I would say about Infinite Jest that was bad, besides the annoying endnotes, even though they might have been necessary is that the tone and the diction of the different characters is different and the plots are different, but he doesn't do a good enough job of escaping his head. If you want to be a good author and you want to be a good writer, you need to make characters who sound totally different. And he does that to a certain extent, but the, the way he writes, he uses too many adverbs, too much like if you could tell the guy was so self-conscious that he wasn't describing it well enough and you can see that in some of his interviews in real life like in Charlie Rose you can see that he's so self-consciously trying to make sure that his point is made he can't really escape his own mind and I think that like in this book 
there are like yeah, Don Gately thinks and sounds different, but I feel like when you listen to like the Val girl talk, she's too similar to Hale. And when Hale talks, that's too similar to the conversation with, between Marath, the insurgent, and Steeply. It's just, you can tell the guy couldn't get out of his head with the way he uses adverbs, the way he uses certain words like uh, uh, serious. He'll use the modifier serious. Oh, we're talking about serious tennis. Like, it's like, you could just tell the David Foster Wallace-isms and the, word, the overuse of the word like for some reason, it's almost like he's trying to overcompensate for being a genius, so he uses the word like to make it seem like it's the way that real people talk. It's like I would only criticize the dialogue in this and the inner dialogue as a little bit unipolar. That was my only complaint. Besides that, I think this might be the, one of the most amazing books and trips I've ever had through a piece of entertainment. It's made me think about life. It's made me think about America. It's made me think about entertainment. It's made me think about technology. It's made me think about drugs uh, more than anything else. So that's that, man. So if you tuned in today, checked out the Deep Homie Guide. Thank you for being here. And uh, I got to pull up the old soundtrack here. I've had a good time. Uh, it was good seeing Paul today. And it was fun being with you. Thank you for checking out our show, Deep Homie Guide of the 21st Century. We are available on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music, everywhere else. Today is June 25th, 2021. And uh, thank you for tuning in. My name is Karam Anthony. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Remember, keep it deep, homies.